Hi, uh, I'm Kimberly Morris. My stamping name is Procrasta Stamper, and I'm going to show you how to make this cute little bunny treat cup. It's made using one of our mini coffee cups uh, that come with the lids. So um, the instructions that I gave you, I'm going to set this aside here. Uh, I told you to start um, cutting some pieces out, so I want to show you what those pieces are. So the first step was to cut the smallest oval um, from the stitched shapes die set. Um, and that's going to be this one right here. So when I say the smallest oval, I mean this one in the center. So this is the one that you use to cut two of these. So when it says, you know, X2, that means times two. Then the next thing that you're going to want to do is use the next largest oval, and you're going to be cutting two pieces, um, two of these out <clears throat> using the next largest oval. And I'll pull that one out. So the next largest is just the next largest one from that small one. So we've got that there. Just slide these over. <clears throat> and then you're going to want to use the smallest circle, that's this one in the center, from the stitch shapes die set. And then you're going to cut actually three of these. So you might say, well, why do I need three but two of the rest? Um, we're actually using two for the eyes, and then we're going to use part of the third one for the nose. So that explains the three there. That wasn't a typo. Um, let's flip this over. The next thing that you're going to want to do is cut the five-point flower. Now this is what it looks like when it's cut, and there's actually two of these. This is the from the perennial petals dies, which coordinates with the stamp set that we're going to be using, which I'll show you in a little bit. So there are actually two of these dies in there, just so you can, you know, cut these uh, two at a time if you want, like if you're doing a class or you're doing multiple little, um, little bunny cups. Um, and then the last thing that you're going to want to cut is also from the perennial petals die set, and it's this, I called it like a spotty, um, circle because when you see the stamp set it'll make sense but this is the die that goes with that and I'm not sure if I have these all in the right place because I've moved these around a little bit since I opened it but that's basically the die that you're going to want to use and cut just one of those that's going to end up being the bunny's tail. <clears throat> so the next thing that you're going to do in your prep work is you're going to punch two of the um, snowman bodies from basic white cardstock and two from basic black cardstock. So this is the punch. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to see with the uh, uh, reflections and whatnot. But this is the snowman builder punch. Um, and so I just punched the body. If you're running this as a class, you might just want to cut some strips of uh, uh, white and black that are just, you know, wide enough uh, to get the body because you don't need anything else um, out of that. Uh, and then I wanted to show you this on video, so let me kind of set these aside while we work with the snowman punch for a second. I'm going to put all the dies over here, and then um, put the little shapes kind of up in the corner here. And as we work with these, um, I have mentioned that you're going to, uh, you know, punch the biggest oval using the snowman builder punch. So that's the bottom, this bottom oval. And then you're going to um, trim it so that the other side of it is round um, by sticking it back in the punch. But there's not a whole lot of room left in this uh, uh, part of the punch, so you can't really slide it all the way in there. So you're going to want to take your paper snips and just kind of cut across here on the, the big ovals. You are, I'm sorry, I meant the small ovals. The black is the small. Um, so what I just said, you're going to do that with the white. Um, the white is going to be the big oval. So let me just do that again here. So the black you're going to have, you're going to want to use the small oval. The white you're going to want to use the big oval. So the way that you get the big oval punched again, or rather cut around the other side, is you're going to want to slide your cardstock in. Um, it's hard to see on the video, but there's kind of a line here. You can see uh, the line at the base of the punch, and then you can see where there is um, another one, the next one down. Um, it's just, uh, you know, the same, um, the same design, and that's where you're going to put your cardstock, you want to slide your cardstock in there so that it's going between the two uh, layers. 
So then you're just going to kind of hold your, um, it'll, it'll just sort of fit in there if you tip it up a little bit. And then make sure that your fingers are not anywhere that they're going to get punched. And then just punch down and it just rounds off that side. So you're going to do that with both of these biggest ovals from the snowman body. See, you got these perfectly rounded little ovals now. Um, and the reason I did this is because we just, um, we don't have the, um, like the rounded punches that we might uh, normally have, the circle punches. We've uh, retired a few of those. And this was just the best way um, to get kind of the eyes for you with just using one, um, you know, item instead of buying a whole, uh, another whole die set. So, and it's really great too, because you can take your snowman punch and use it, you know, during the rest of the year for, for making, you know, little ovals on your designs. So same thing with this little one. Um, this is probably going to be a little bit harder to see, but you want to make sure you get it in between those two um, layers. Let me tip it towards me so I can see what I'm doing. And then once you get it in that area of the small oval, just kind of, you know, flip it up a little bit. Again, make sure that your fingers aren't going to get pinched, and then you just press that down, and it'll trim it off for you. If you have any little weird edges, you can always take your snips and just kind of trim it down a little bit more. But same thing again, go in between the layers of the punch where the paper would slide in. Um, this is awkward when I'm trying not to get, not to get my head in the camera. Um, and then, like I said, if you just kind of tip it up just a little bit, it just sort of rests naturally in there where it needs to be. And then you can just press the punch down and cut it. And you can see like on this one, there's may, might be itty bitty little burrs. Um, so you can just take your snips and just go right across there and just trim that. And then th there you have your eyes. If you're doing this in a class, um, I would personally recommend that everyone um, pre-purchase the Snowman Builder Punch just so they have that um, themselves and you don't have people waiting on each other to, uh, to do this part. Okay, looks like this one has little tiny burrs too. Sometimes I'm a little too uh, exacting, but okay. So the next thing that we're going to do um, that's on the list, so we've punched out everything that we have in the directions uh, for the prep work. So we're gonna start on the assembly. So it, the first thing that we're gonna do is the ears and we're gonna put attach that to the cup. <clears throat> so what I do is I take the cup and I'll pop the lid off and you can see where the seam is here. So um, you might think, oh, the seam is like the center of the back. Well, it's not because it overlaps by about this much, right? So these two pieces overlap. So right in the center of where those pieces overlap is actually the center of the back, okay? Um, and I want to put my lid on where the little sippy top thing is centered with like the middle of that back seam. Um, and this is just gonna help to get the ears to where they're you know pretty even in the front and you're going to you know not have that seam showing. Oh, I got something on it, I hope my little, maybe my little eyes or whatever will cover that. Um, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is uh, just glue these, um, let's see, I'll set this right here, glue these ears together. So the ears, are gonna be the white ovals. You can see those there. And then the little pink stitched ovals. And what I did was I lined up the ovals down at the bottom um, when I adhered them together. So I'm gonna use the uh, multi-purpose liquid glue. Um, this works real well. Uh, I hate getting my fingers all sticky, but if you just use a tiny little bit, um, it works pretty well. So I'll just use a little bit. And I, I have like this little cup that I stick it in to uh, keep the glue down at the bottom there. So I'll line this one up at the bottom and just kind of center it down there at the bottom. If you want to use uh, like our stamp and seal or whatever for this, you're certainly welcome to. Um, this is nice because you can kind of slide it a little bit before it's dry. Um, or, I mean, it's not like totally dry. This kind of dry is sticky. But, you know, before it's set, you can slide it to get it into place if you didn't quite get it in the right place. But, like I said, I just hate getting sticky all over my fingers because then I end up getting it on my project. Um, one thing that you can do is, uh, if you've got your Simply 
chamois close by, which I think mine's kind of buried. I don't remember where I said. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> Um, then you can kind of wipe your fingers on the on the edge of that. Just make sure that your fingers are dry before you uh, touch your project again. Oops, I dripped a little thing of water there. Okay, so we, now we've got the ears. Um, what I want to do is let them set for a little bit because I want to use the bone folder to kind of curve them. So I'm going to go ahead and work on um, assembling the, the eyes right now just to give those just a second to, to do their thing. Okay, so the eyes are going to have that smallest circle from the stitched shapes, and then you're going to uh, layer these, you know, kind of the whites towards the center as if you, you know, have these two eyes, right? And then the black is going to go kind of towards the center and also sort of down a little bit. I mean, you could put them in the center and put them up here if you want. You can do it however you want. This is just how I did it. So let me set these aside here. And again, I just use the liquid glue. Um, sometimes when you uh, punch or die cut, you might get little marks on. So you might want to figure out which side you want to be the front and which side you want to be the back if you see any little marks on your cardstock. So I will put a little bit of adhesive on there, a little bit of the liquid glue on there. Just really light uh, lines. And you don't have to put it all the way out to the edge because when you push it down, it's going to kind of squish out towards the edge anyway. So you want to line that up to where it is, you know, coming to the center but not necessarily like over overlapping the edge there. So that it's kind of centered on the, uh, see look I got glue and it's sticky and it's gross. Blech. Okay, I have an adhesive eraser somewhere around here but it's kind of buried so I don't know where it went. <clears throat> All right, well, Stampin' Up! doesn't carry the adhesive erasers anymore, which is kind of a bummer because they're really useful. But if you can pick one up, they, you know, you can use them forever, basically. They last a really long time, which is probably why Stampin' Up! doesn't carry them anymore because once you buy one, you can use it for a long, long time. Okay, so that looks about right. Um, and if you wanted to be goofy, I mean, you could, you know, place his... his <laughs> little eyeballs, you know, kind of weird or whatever on there. Um, let me go ahead and get some glue on here. Um, oh, actually, no, I'm not going to do glue on that. For the pupils, I did take the mini Stampin' Dimensionals. So let's go ahead and put a couple on here. I just did um, a couple because they're littler, um, and I didn't want the little eyeball to just kind of be flopping around everywhere um, by just setting one in the middle. But you could just put one in the middle if you want. But I decided I was going to do two. Um, so these things are kind of a pain in the behind to get off, these little um, the little layers. Um, but if you have a, a lint roller, you can actually take a sheet of your lint roller and um, you can either just have your lint roller open a little bit on your desk or you can take a sheet from your lint roller and, and stick it on your desk with the sticky side up. And then once you take these things off, see they just get everywhere, they fly everywhere. But if you, um, right when you take them off, you can like just dab them on your lint roller and then they aren't all over the surface of your uh, work desk and everything. So I'm just gonna stick those on there. We'll put his little eyeballs kind of down a little bit. Sorry, I'm trying not to lean over, but then sometimes I just can't see what I'm doing really well. And just sort of get them to where they look the way you want. Okay, and then we're gonna come back to these ears really quick. So we already kind of centered the lid on the, the cup and we have the two ears here. So you're gonna want to um, put these to where, you see this little sippy top? You're gonna kind of see that back behind there, and you can use that to kind of center the ears the way that you want them. So um, since you centered that along the back center of the cup, that should work real well. So what I like to do before I put them on is just take the top of the ear and then you're going to take your bone folder and kind of put it in the vertical center. I'm gonna turn this over because it's easier to curl this way. And you just curl the ear just a little bit from the center to the side. And then the same thing on the other side. Just on the top of it, um, I mean, you could do the whole thing down, but I don't think you need to. It gives it a little bit of a rounded edge. Sorry, my kitty's trying to get into things. She always does that when I'm 
doing something. So again, take it from the vertical center and just kind of out, <clears throat> you know, for the, to the top, and it gives you this little bit of little bit of curve for the ear. And then to glue it on, I like to use the the liquid glue. You could probably uh, use the tear and tape if you wanted. Um, it just only takes a little bit of glue because you're really only using, you know, this little section of the cup where the lid goes up. So you don't want to put a whole lot of, of uh, glue down there, but you want to put enough glue to where it's going to stay, right? So, Gizmo, you're so loud. So you can put this down in here, and instead of just having it straight up, if you just sort of angle it back a little bit, yes, baby, then you can, again, kind of slide it to where you want um, and just press that, that down there against the lid um, and make sure it's kind of where you where you want it to stay. Again, since you can slide it, then you can sort of adjust and do whatever you need to do. Um, the tear and tape I was going to mention, I think is um, a lot more likely to just kind of um, to come away from the plastic of the cup, but I haven't played with it. I just think the liquid glue is is um, easier to, to work with, so you can sort of slide it around and get these where you want them. So I'm going to say that's probably good. Um, and then I'm going to leave this on while I put my eyes on, but I'm just going to be careful not to bang those around while they're drying. So to put the eyes on, um, you're going to want to figure out, on the first one that I did, you can see there's a little bit of space between the lid, but then that makes his little mouth go um, right butt up against his little paws. So I was thinking for this one I would try and kind of put him a little bit higher. So to adhere these, I, I'm going to set this here so it's not creating a shadow. I flip these over. So these are going to be just as you're looking at them, right? I flip these over and then I just put a couple of Stampin' Dimensionals like right around where the little pupils are and um, put a couple of them here because I'm not rounding them to, you know, fit the side of the cup. I think they're kind of cuter when they stick out. So I'm going to put two right next to, you know, the very edge of each of the pupils and then maybe one right here. You could use the bigger Stampin' Dimensionals if you want, but, um, you know, as long as I've already got the mini Stampin' Dimensionals out, then that's what, what I'm using. So let me set these over here. And I always, it seems like I always have to, like, tap mine to see if I've gotten all of the little um, liner things peeled off. Okay, so these are going to go back on this way. So let's bring our little bunny down. Oh, speaking of bunnies, my kitty's trying to get up here. Um, and then I'm going to put these to where um, this invisible line that's going down the center um, without the kitty helping. Hey, sweetie, you can't help. Um, there, just imagine a, a line down here, and I'm going to kind of, you know, shove the eyes up sort of towards that, right? So let me go. She is being impertinent today. Gizmo, you can't help me make the bunny. And then we'll put the other one here, just kind of right next to it. And if you put them on gently, I just have to let her do it, otherwise she's just going to keep jumping up here. So if you put them on gently, then you can kind of peel them off and try again if you get them, uh, you know, like if that's too close for you. Um, if you, like I said, if you put them on gently, if you peel them back, you know, very slowly, then you can remove them and sort of place them uh, again where you want them. So don't press down to, you know, get them really adhered until they're right about where you want them. So I'm going to say that's about right. And this is where it gets harder. So I've let these dry a little bit and now I've used it to get the spacing for the eyes. And so I'm going to go ahead and pop the top off and set it aside. <laughs> Kitty. I know it. I know you love to help, don't you? You love to help. Good girl. Hop down. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. Um, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is stamp the little... Um, I don't know, it makes the mouth. So I'm using a stem and some leaves uh, from this stamp set that coordinates with the dies that we're using. And this is the Pretty Perennials uh, stamp set. So we're going to t 
take out this little stem here. So there's a little straight stem. I'm just going to set that here for now. And we're going to use these little kind of solid colored in leaves. They're a little bit, they have like kind of a gradient look or watercolor look to them, but um, they're, they're solid. The other ones, there's another one that has kind of lines. It's hard to see, but it has sort of little lines. And I, you could use that one if you want, but I kind of wanted the solid one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead while I'm taking stamps out and making all this noise, I'm gonna go ahead and take this little polka dot splotchy one. It's like kind of the center, could be the center of a flower. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out because we're gonna be ending up using that um, for his little bunny tail. <clears throat> so set that aside. Um, all we want right now is the stem and the leaves. So the stem is a little bit curved. Um, if you want to, uh, leave it curved um, and it doesn't bother you, that's fine. Um, if you look at this uh, closely, you'll notice that one end is a little bit kind of like pointed more than the other. And so that's the end that I'm gonna use to like kind of go down into the stems. Um, but what I'm gonna do is sort of try and uh, straighten this out. And you can do this like on the block or you can do it like on your grid paper. Um, but it's a little bit harder in your grid paper because you gotta move your fingers if you wanna stamp down on that with your block and get it attached. So um, if you can, it's hard for me to do this again because my head's gonna get in the, way the, in the way of the camera, but you can um, put your, just kinda line up your acrylic block over the grid paper and just look through it. I'm gonna do this down here because I can't see it very well. Um, to straighten this out sort of into a straight line because you can see the line of the grid paper through it. So we'll just see if I can try and get this. It doesn't have to be like actually square with the block as long as you're, you know, looking through it to, to see what you're doing. So that looks pretty straight. Okay, so we don't have that, that bend in there anymore. Um, and I'm going to use the Stays On Jet Black Ink Pad. Um, now I don't want to confuse you, but I'm going to go ahead and just put the, um, the little mouth part uh, on the other side. Um, and like I said, I don't want to confuse you, but I, I just like using them, you know, on one side of the block and then flipping the block over. It's totally up to you if you want to do it on one side or not. And this looks like it might be trying to bend its way back. Let's see if I can do this better. Okay, that's better. Um, and so I can see like the, the more pointed end kind of is pointing up. So that's the one that I actually want um, you know, pointing down towards the mouth. So to line this up, um, you're gonna make, wanna make sure you already have the eyes where you want them. And then ink this up with a well-inked stays on ink pad. You're gonna wanna make sure that your um, ink pad is inked up well. Stays on is meant for, um, oh look, and I got made a big, big huge mess. It's made for uh, non-porous surfaces so it dries quickly. So you can um, ink up your image and stamp it down and see if it's, you know, if you've got enough ink coverage um, and just kind of practice a few times to see how that works out for you. Um, what I want to make sure that you do before you clean anything is if you happen to get this ink on the edge like this, you're going to want to wipe it off um, because we're going to be slightly rolling the, the stamp to the side and you don't want to touch that to your cup and get all that black ink on your cup. So when you're inking it up, be really careful and just tap really lightly and just build up the ink on there. And then when you're ready, you can just stamp. And I'm just looking right through it and kind of starting at the bottom of the eyes. Um, if I imagined a line right there and I'm going to stamp down and I'm going to slightly rock it back and forth. Um, and you can see it didn't quite pick up on the edge. Uh, when you're practicing this, you can put some post-it notes on here and just like practice on a post-it note um, or you know a little edge of your grid paper first to get the feel for it. Um, but uh, since these are um, photopolymer stamps, you can also go ahead and just, if you feel comfortable, just go ahead and you know put that back on there and fill in that spot. But it's not really super important that it's perfect, okay? So I'm gonna tap this off here my little things out of the way. And then I'm gonna flip this over to use the little stem leaf parts. So I'm gonna get that inked up. Again, you wanna make sure you're not tipping your uh, 
block into it so if you want to you know stay up at the top of the ink pad you know right here just so that there's not extra ink pad hanging out down there that can touch it make sure it's inked up really well you can again you know practice a couple times and see if you know when you're looking at it does it look like it's inked up do i think it's inked up okay and then you can stamp it and again you can always practice this with your little post-it notes just to stick a post-it note you know over this area and practice and i'm just going to uh, line up I'm just lining up the leaves with this little notch here so and it doesn't matter if it overlaps or not um, you're gonna want to roll it side to side uh, and then you've got your little image so um, it helps if you can put your hand in there but practice with that post-it note and see how you feel the most comfortable um, to get that uh, to get that coverage that you want. If you don't quite get the coverage that you want or you don't like the little spaces, one thing that you can do is take uh, just a black, you know, fine tip Sharpie marker or you can take one of our um, Stampin' Blends. This is the basic black dark Stampin' Blend. And what I like to do is just, instead of like making a line, if you just make little dots um, to sort of fill in where you might want it a little bit more coverage, then you can do that, you know, or you can just leave it so you don't have to be all perfectionist about it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Um, like I said, it dries pretty quick, so you're usually pretty good with that. The next step that we're going to look at is the nose, and you can, you know, measure this to cut it or whatever, but I'm just going to snip it in four pieces. So once I snip it in four, Um, then that gives me a pretty good nose. I decided that I didn't really quite like the nose that big. Um, so I use these dotted lines as my, um, you know, cutting line as my guide and then just cut around. And then it makes the nose just a little bit smaller so that it looks just a little more, I guess, delicate, right? <clears throat> so we're going to be putting on the uh, whiskers. But before we put the whiskers on, we want to go ahead and do the little blush cheeks so that the whiskers aren't in the way when we're doing that. In order to put on the little blush cheeks, you're going to want your Blushing Bride ink pad and you're going to want a sponge dauber, which I have around here somewhere and it just disappeared. Uh oh, I wonder if my kitty knocked it over. Um, I can't find it now. That's ridiculous. Okay, well, that's what happens when you're stamping, I guess. <clears throat> Let me look down on the ground here really quick and see if I can find it. I can't find it. Kitty, what did you do with it? Um, that is so weird. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, stuff just disappears when it's right in front of you. So this is the little sponge dauber. This is the, I put some little labels on there for the different colors so that I don't really ever have to um, wash them. So you're going to want to make sure that your Blushing Bride ink pad is inked up um, a fair amount. And you just uh, dab that and then you're going to just put the little cheeks on just like that. Um, so again, you can practice on your grid paper, scrap paper, whatever. Um, what I did was uh, kind of looked at, you know, where his eyes were. Um, you can make the little cheeks closer. Uh, in or wherever you want to do them. I think these I want to kind of put a little bit closer in. So I'm going to sort of just press down right in here. And you don't really have to, you know, dab. Just press it in that space. So I'm going to turn this over so I can kind of see it a little bit better. And, and then you just put the little things in there. If you want to dab a little bit more on, then you can do that. Um, but that's all it takes. All right, and then I close my ink pad so I don't get anything else inky. Um, and this is, it feels like it's like really smooth. It might be slightly coated. So you'll want to, you know, make sure not to smear that, that blushing bride ink. Like I said, the stays on dries really quickly, but this might take a little bit longer to dry. So you're just going to kind of want to watch what you're doing with that. So the next step is to get the whiskers on. So I've got, um, you could use white if you wanted. Um, this is the, the snail mail twine combo pack, comes with white and pink twine. So you could use either or, or you could use a combination if you wanted to do like two pinks and one white on the inside. But um, I did pink. <clears throat> 
and I did about three inches um, and just cut three pieces that are about three inches. They don't have to be super exact because I'm going to trim them down anyway. So you just cut those three pieces and then I figure out where I want my nose and figure out kind of where the center of the nose is going to be. Um, because I want those whiskers kind of, uh, you know, coming out. I don't want them sticking up uh, above or down below. So um, if I can kind of eyeball where they're going to go, I can take a little dot of my liquid glue and we'll just pretend that's about right. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying not to let this like uh, wobble all over the place. And then you can take your three strings. Let me set this ink pad right here so it's got something to lean against. <clears throat> and then you're going to take your three strings. You're probably going to want to um, make them flat because if you don't make them flat, if you like tie them together in a knot or stack them on top of each other, then you the nose, when you put on the little cardstock nose, there's going to be stuff like kind of sticking up underneath it. So just put those on there and then you can kind of let that dry for a minute. So it looks like I got quite a bit on there. You can see you don't need to have a huge dot of glue. I'm just going to sort of pull that glue up to the top. And then you're going to want to let that set so that um, you're not disrupting it too much. Um, so the next step would be to put the nose on top, but I'm just going to let that sit for a minute so that it can um, just get a little more sticky. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to these two die cut pieces, which are the five petal um, die cuts. And when I look at them, um, it looks to me like there are like three that are um, kind of more together and then two that are sort of, you know, stuck together on their own. So um, I use these three down, down here and I just kind of cut off with, you know, kind of just a little bit of a rounded between these two little, um, what do you call these? These little indentations in here. So I'm going to show you, I just take my scissors and just cut that part off, right? So that's what I've done there. And then same thing over here. Let me see. It's just when I turn them a certain way, it just looks like it works. And so you can just kind of turn them around and see like, you know, which two do you want to cut off here? Now I've kind of lost my place. I think that was it. So that he has like, it looks like like three little toes, right? That you're sort of seeing. So I've got that one and then that one. So you can see I cut two of the petals off. <clears throat> and these are going to go on the bottom of the cup in the front as his little paws. And again, I just use my mini Stampin' Dimensionals. Um, you could use just one if you wanted. Um, I just used a couple just to make sure they stay on there. So we'll put those on there. Take off the little liners. Take off the liners of those. And again, you're going to want to, you can just press on here very uh, lightly just to kind of set them on there and see if you like the placement. So you could um, put them farther out. You could, you know, put them right next to each other, um, whatever works. But you're going to want to keep them just a little bit up from the bottom of the cup. So if you want to press down on those to get them, you can reach into the cup and sort of, you know, use that uh, leverage from behind there. And then let me just take a little <clears throat> paper towel and I'm going to kind of dab off a little bit of this extra adhesive that's there. I don't need that waiting around to dry for hours and hours. Okay. So putting on the nose can be a little more tricky. Because you have the strings or the twine underneath, um, it's going to be easiest if you can get a little bit of a, um, of a dimensional down in the bottom and then a little bit up at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one up near the top. Um, and that doesn't leave like a whole lot of room. So if you want to take another dimensional and um, just sort of 
uh, snip it in half to where, see the pointy part here? Then you can put that pointy part in the pointy part of the nose. If you snip this mini dimensional in half, then it'll give you kind of a channel for that twine to run through. And that doesn't look like it's really wide enough, so I'm just gonna go ahead and um, use the other half of, where did I put it? There it is, it's on my scissors. Use the other half of this um, mini Stampin' Dimensional up top here. And then that gives me, you still have the adhesive on the kind of the top and the bottom. I guess I could put that up a little closer to the top there. You don't want it so close that you can see it, but you want it close enough to give you um, that channel. So you can see that channel is going to be about, um, you know, wide enough for that twine to sit down there, in there without uh, disturbing the adhesive that's going to hold the little nose down. So once you get that, then you can just put that over the top. There we go. And then you can just trim the um, trim the whiskers however you like. Um, I kind of like for the center one to be a little bit, um, what's the word, uh, a little shorter. <laughs> I'm losing my vocabulary, excuse me. Let me grab without destroying my whole thing. Um, these are just ribbon cutting scissors and I find that they cut through the twine really nice because a lot of times my snips will have um, some kind of adhesive or something stuck to them and it just makes the uh, the twine kind of fray. So you can leave them longer, you can cut them shorter. Like I said, I kind of cut the one in the middle a little bit shorter than the others. That's just what works for me. And these don't really take long to put together, it just takes a while to explain it if you're explaining it while you're doing it. So anyway, um, that's your little, your little bunny. If you do have the um, the Sharpie or the little uh, Stampin' Blend and you want to put uh, some little kind of little freckles in his little cheek areas underneath the whiskers, then you can do that too. Um, <clears throat> like I said, just play around with the whiskers until you get them the way you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's our little guy and we can put the lid back on and there you go. So that's how you make the bunny treat cup. Um, this is the other one. If the uh, top of this bothers you, where the you know little drink thingy is kind of um, you know sitting up, like if you can see it um, from and it and it bothers you to see it through there, you can kind of um, press this little thing down so that it's sort of out of the way. Um, it's gonna you know be open a little bit in the back there, but that's fine. Um, it just sort of, um, you know, helps to sort of remove that little bump right there if you don't like that in kind of the visual line. But these guys are really pretty easy. Um, you can see this ink is going to lighten up a little bit. Um, so if you're looking at it and you're like, oh my goodness, that's kind of, you know, orange, it, it kind of soaks in over time and um, ends up being much more uh, similar to the what do you call the blushing bride? So that's how you put it together. Um, let's not forget the little tail on the back. So the last step is uh, this little, I called it the little spotty circle. And this uh, coordinates with this stamp in the stamp set, which I pulled out just a little bit earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, it's, there's so many like little um, bumps and things, it can be kind of hard to see how it lines up. Let me grab my little, um, block. So you're going to put on your block, um, ink it up. And if you want to, you can like stamp this on your grid paper and then look and see. It looks like there's maybe one side that sticks out just a little bit more. Maybe it's this one. I don't know. Um, it doesn't have to be exact or it might be over here. But if you want to, you can just kind of take this and sort of orient it in the way that it looks like it's uh, gonna go, just so you can get that exact uh, match. And then you're gonna just stamp down on it. Now I'm gonna slide this down because I can't see through the block very well without doing that. But you don't have to match it up perfectly is the thing. Um, 
So that looks fairly decent. But um, what I didn't do on this other one, oh my goodness, Kitty, don't get in the ink pad. <laughs> Kitty is jealous of Bunny. Um, what you can do that I didn't do before is just kind of take the uh, stamp and turn it a little bit to where the stems are going to be filling up the area that is not filled up right now. And then um, I'm going to stamp this off and then just kind of try and do it again one more time. And then it sort of fills it up a little bit more and maybe gives it a little bit more of a dimensional look rather than just stamping it the one time. So it's totally up to you how you want to do that, but um, I just decided that when I did this again, I was going to give that a shot and see how it looks. My cat is getting so naughty. We're almost done, baby. And then all you're going to do is take your Stampin', your mini Stampin' Dimensionals and adhere that little bunny butt right on there. I'm just going to put two in the center. I have an ill-behaved kitty. Oops, get off my fingers. I hate it when I peel these off and then I flip them over and then I accidentally get the um, like non-slick side stuck to it and basically <laughs> ruin the stickiness off of it. Um, so you're going to want to just put this at the bottom in the center. Again, remember the center is not this seam. And if you see kind of this lump to where the, it's overlapped, um, it's in between these two things. So just kind of try and put it in between there and you'll be centered. Or you can kind of look between the, um, the ears and you know just center it down that line as well. So that's all done. If you want to put something in here that uh, is a little bit larger like pixie sticks or lollipops, you might wanna see if you can take a craft knife and just, um, you know, just trim around the circle so that you have the outline, but you know, then it's open so that you can put things of any um, size in there so that you're not just constrained to whatever fits inside the cup when it's closed. So um, this would be cute for um, if you were to make even like little pixie sticks and then um, you could make some flowers uh, with this stamp set and um, attach the, the die cut flowers to the pixie, to the top of the pixie stick as they're sticking out. And it would look like a, like a little planter or whatever with a little candy in it. So it'd be super cute too. So um, that's all the directions. Um, you can leave a comment if you have uh, any problems with that. Um, I've also done these with, uh, in balmy blue, so they don't have to be pink. They can be whatever color you want. I know pink and white looks really great for a little bunny, but um, you can use whatever color you want. I like the, I, blue's my favorite color, so I use the, um, I'll show you the little pieces that I have cut, but um, you can just make the uh, insides of the ears blue. I know bunnies aren't blue, but it still is kind of cute. And then use the, um, the blue circles for the outside of the eyes instead of the uh, instead of the pink, and then you can give him little blue paws if you wanted to. So that's just another idea, um, especially you know sometimes um, if you're going to do this for Easter and you have you know boys and they're not really excited about pink for Easter, then blue is a great option. Um, you could use these for a baby shower as well. I think these would be cute little baby showers um, things. So you could use the pink you know, for a girl, the blue for a boy, you could use the, um, you know, a yellow, <clears throat> excuse me, or a green if you don't know the gender of the baby yet. Um, so these are just really cute and fun. Um, and I'm sure you could come up with some other ideas for some uh, darling little critters that you can make as well. So uh, thanks for watching. And if you want to look at my website, I am at procrastastamper.blogspot.com. And if you want to purchase any of these supplies, they are all listed in the PDF. Um, thanks for watching and happy stamping.